In this episode, I'm gonna take you through a nine point quality assurance checklist that you need to go through before you go live. So I'll just go through with each of them and make sure that you know what they are. And then when we do go live, you can feel absolutely confident that all the world are gonna be looking at a beautiful website. Number one, pages. Well, what do I mean by that? I want you to make sure that all your pages are complete and have content. It sounds obvious, doesn't it? Well, actually, as you should know by now, your website has many hidden pages and a lot of system pages. So to make this easy for you, what we've done is put all, all of these quick links in the navigation area. So if you hover over the main menu and go to navigation and scroll down, you can see these quick links. And actually the history of why we put it in here is because a lot of people would forget these pages before going live. So we just made a nice list and say, hey, make sure you've got your pages in here. So let's have a look. For example, we haven't covered the 404 page yet, really, but this is the page that people are going to go to um, if the page no longer exists. Maybe you've had a new website and an uh, old page has been taken down or maybe a page has been deleted and they're going to go to a 404. Now, we're going to look at redirects just in one second if you're thinking that, so uh, hang tight. But let's just go and have a look at a common way to edit. I'm going to click into our 404 page. Well, you can see here that this page isn't satisfactory, is it? What we've got is text that's kind of fighting with the image behind. It's not that legible. So let's uh, improve this. With a 404 page, you can add a bit of humor, um, and make light of the fact that someone hasn't found your page, and then give them a clear direction of what to do next. So in this case, we've got 404. The site's gonna be for Alio, so we can say Alio No. So I'll just type in Alio No, exclamation mark. Um, the page that you're looking for no longer exists. What we can do is actually give this a big heading one, make it obvious make the button stand out a little bit. Notice this is going to the home page, back to index, so we're sending them back home. Good strategy for your 404. And we need to make this stand out a little bit more. So, what, as you know, what we can do on here is put in a gradient. I'll just use my 130 angle as normal. I'm gonna put the overlay here to be much more, taking the emphasis off the image, but it could be an image of someone uh, looking like the page, you know, looking confused that the page doesn't exist. Whatever you want to do there, you can have a bit of fun with that. And when you're ready, just remember to press save and, and exit. And now you can go and do that for all of your other pages. Just have a check and make sure that all the text is legible and you're happy with all the content. Number two is your SEO page titles and meta descriptions. As you know, if you've updated your page titles and meta descriptions, you're gonna get a blue tick rather than a red SEO cross. And to update this blue SEO tick, you can go to the settings, scroll down to SEO, and make sure you've got a title tag, which is 70 characters, and a meta description, which is up to 300 characters. And my advice with your meta description is finish with a call to action, in which case it's saying here, contact us for a custom website built for you. Okay, so think about that with your SEO title tags and meta descriptions, and also remember to do that for your images too. Number three, I want you to check the size of your files. We don't want any large, unnecessarily large files slowing down your website. So you can come over to the files area. Now, top tip is if you sort by file size largest. So I'm gonna do this and click search. And what you'll see is the largest files appear at the top. Well, as you know, on mobile, when you upload a JPEG, we're compressing that down. Now we're aiming for below 200 KB or as close as we can to get there. Now, if this is over 300 KB, this won't be blue, it'll be red, saying to you, can you do something about that image? Maybe you'll make it a bit smaller, um, or maybe you forgot to turn on the compression when that image was uploaded. Now, as you know, you can go and change the, the compression over in the global settings area, and we often see that if some, sometimes some users have turned that off, and they'll upload a five megabyte image and they forget to turn the compression back on. So top tip there, check your file sizes and make sure that's running. Now, if you have got a large image that's 
um, that's above 300 kb, it's most likely one of three things. One, like I've said, someone's turned off the compression and forgot to turn it back on, then uploaded an image so it hasn't compressed. Number two is, it, is it's a PNG file. Now we do attempt to compress PNGs, but remember they're graphic files. So JPEGs are your images, and PNGs are graphic files, maybe for your logo with a transparent background. So we do compress those as well, but the key tip here is make sure that if you have got an image, you've actually uploaded a JPEG and not a PNG. Those PNGs will be larger and Google will penalize you if you're using PNGs rather than JPEGs for your images. And the third is PDFs. Well, you don't really want to compress a PDF. So often, like, we'll, we'll know not to compress that when you upload a PDF, but the PDF could actually be quite large. So one of the episodes we looked at files in the end, very end of day two, well, when we're, if, you put a P, if you put a PDF into a widget, we'll automatically put the lazy loading on that anyway. So it won't start loading until the user gets to that particular point in the web page, making sure your site is optimized just naturally and organically. Okay, so let's move on to number four. Number four is redirects. This is something that everyone should do and you should get into a habit of redirects. So what you can do is go to the optimized tab and in here we've got redirects. Now with redirects, it might be that on your old website, it was called about-us and your new website, you've changed it to just simply about. So what would we do in that instance? Because if that web page is on the search engine somewhere, it's still going to be on the search engines about-us. So we want to redirect it to about so we can go over to the redirects here and we can put what's the old path put in the forward slash i'm going to type in about us and then i'm going to put in the new path here redirect to about press save and now we've got our first redirect set up so you can build a whole list of redirects here but my advice for seo is first preserve and then enhance well what do i mean by that well, if a page is ranking well, you want to preserve it. So you want to preserve the URL and you want to preserve the content and then you can advance, um, enhance that content over time. So if it was me and I had this situation as an old URL, which was about hypheners, I'd probably keep that URL the same and keep it about hypheners. So if that's your basic strategy, always think, first preserve and then enhance, and then you're only changing those essential pages that you have to change or that you need to as part of your marketing plan and structure. So that's a top tip there, first preserve and then enhance. And if you do this, the, the migration process from the old website to the new website will go well because years ago, we really had to focus a lot on site migrations. But these days, Google knows anyway. So as long as you're keeping those URLs the same and the copy is quite similar in, in, in most regards, then you're going to be just fine. And number five, you want to check your website on different devices. Well, as you know, in the mobile platform, you can come and check your website on mobile, tablet, and on desktop. Now, the preview settings here, what we're doing is taking the smallest size, the smallest breakpoint for each of those devices. So you can be sure you're looking at the smallest one. Now, if you've watched, which I hope you have, watched uh, day three, episode one, where I took you through the essentials class, then you'll know how to structure a website page so you don't run into any issues on mobile from the get-go. And that's because our bots are gonna come in and make sure all your padding and alignment is working just fine. So, but still, make sure you have looked at your pages on mobile, tablet, and desktop. And do remember that if your pages are particularly long and there is some information that you don't really want to display on mobile, then you can come into any layout, any frame, and then go to the advanced tab and say, you know what, I just want to show this particular layout on desktop only. And you can do that right down to this, this frame here. So I could say, you know what, don't show this card on mobile, show it on desktop only. Now, that's my uh, advice to 
most users just make sure you you use um, our preview tools in here because we are look previewing there on the smallest size for that particular device but you can also go a step further i'll just flip into another tab now looking at this on the front end and i could um, go to inspect element here in chrome or you know on safari as well but i could click the mobile tab and you can see I can change my screen size here to different dimensions and across different devices as well. So I'm here on a Mac, but I could go and look at this on a Surface and, you know, a Samsung Galaxy and so on and so forth. So the top tip there, if you do want to have a look at other devices and other browsers without having to go and buy a million phones. And number six is test your forms. I know I've said this a lot throughout the five day challenge, but do test your forms. What, every time you have a new form, go to that page on the front end and complete it and make sure that you receive that email, but also send it to your um, other account. Maybe you send it to a Gmail or make sure you at least send it to yourself so that you can have a look at what that email looks like to your customer. So the first thing is come into the forms area, which, you know, you go to the main menu and then forms. First of all, get your eye in down here and see what's, which, which email addresses in your admin team, which admin notification email addresses is this going to. You see here on the checkout, this one's going to orders at your email. Hasn't been set up, you know, so I could just jump in here, click the settings on this one and make sure this is going to our fulfillment team. In, in this case, it might be orders at belio you know dot com or dot com dot au right and making sure that that admin and customer is is seeing the right email address if um, this checkout has gone you might actually want them to reply where do you want them to reply to is that going to a support email address or is it going to the warehouse so make sure you update your emails just remember if you want to be multiple people to see this one you don't need a space here you can do paul at belio .com.au. Now that would send me that email with, with this um, customer notification email. One top tip though, you could just do something like this, like Belio support and then use uh, the triangular bracket and set it up like that. Now the customer is going to see that in their inbox under the name rather than the email address. So it just looks a lot nicer. So I would get into a habit of setting up your emails in this format. So now go back into your forms and make sure it's set up like that. And I want you to check that all your forms are set up correctly with the correct thank you email and the correct thank you landing page. So what do I mean by that? This is your thank you landing page. Just check this. This is a page that's hidden. And if you go down to the thank you email, this is a section that's hidden. So what do I mean by that? Let's just go back over into the pages area. And if you're ever unsure how to find your thank you emails and thank you pages, remember from the forms episode, just highlight page and, and section and highlight hidden and just type in a keyword like thank and then hit search. And then you can see that these are set up. So what I like to do is set up my thank you. I have lots, I'd like to have unique thank you pages for each different form because each form might have a next interaction. So you can start to create funnels. Well, in this case, this thank you is tagged thank you page and this one's thank you email. You can see the thank you page is a hidden page. You can see the thank you email is a hidden section. If that's not making sense to you, go back and watch the forms episode from day two, where we look a little bit more at that. And then finally, your Google Recapture. Okay, so you want to put Google Recapture on your forms, a no robots checkbox, so that you don't get lots of spam. So that is very important. And to do that, you go back over into the integrations area, global settings, go to integrations, and then you want to add in your Google Recapture site key and your Google Recapture secret key. So that's the first two things you do. Add those two keys from your Google Recapture account. When you add in your site key and secret key, press save. 
And now when you go back into your forms, which we'll just do here, at the bottom of each form, so let's go to our short light and hit settings. And as, as I scroll down to the bottom of the page to integrations, now you can see the Google recapture toggle. So first you need to add in your site and your secret key in the global settings. Then for each of the form that you want the recapture on, now you turn on the checkbox here and press save. So that is also setting up your forms with the right email addresses, the right thank you page, the right landing page, and also with Google recapture. And number seven is proofread your website, which sounds obvious, but if you're like me and you write a lot of content, it is quite hard to proofread your own work. And that's because you've written it. So as you're reading through, you tend to skip ahead. So what I like to do as a top tip is just open your website up on your phone and proofread it on your phone and you'll find you pick up a lot of changes that way. But if you don't have any other team members that can help you do it or you don't have any friends that can help you do it, you can always use lots of resources on the internet that exist now, such as things like Fiverr.com. Now I've used that service once before to proofread a lot of mobile work and actually found an English tutor from Oxford University that could go through all of my sloppy work and make sure that it was well proofread. Number eight is user testing. Now, not everyone will have a huge budget to go and hire a user testing team, which is quite understandable because that can get expensive. But there are simple things you can do. Obviously, you can share your website with people outside of your company that can go and test that. So that's, you know, even if it's friends and family or people within the industry that you know are going to give you good feedback. So obvious stuff. But you can also learn a lot from your testing from your ads. If on your landing pages, your multivariate pages, you're seeing things that are working, then you can actually take those things that are working and apply them to your other pages. So you can get a lot of good information there and a lot of good information from your stats programs like Google Analytics to look at things like bounce rate. You know, are people leaving? Where are they leaving? And there's a couple of cheap tools that you can try such as Crazy Egg and Hotjar, which will give you lots of information about what's happening on your pages so that you know exactly what you need to go and change. And finally, number nine, you can consider an SEO audit. Now, if you are looking for an SEO team, then you can contact mobile via the form on this page, or if you're watching this on YouTube, click a link into a description, and we do have SEO partners that we work with. But we also do have a site health check service so after you've gone live, you might want to contact mobile and we have a service where we can go through and optimize things for you. For our larger customers in the enterprise, we do actually build separate instances of the website. So we take it off the mobile platform and give you your own separate instance and your own dedicated hosting. And we can strip away all the things that are required in the CMS to only have the JavaScript and CSS that you need to make sure your pages are lightning quick. Now you would consider that maybe if you're in the top three spots of the search engines and you're jostling for that first position, then site speed can actually make quite quite a difference with that. So definitely contact us if you've got any questions in regards to SEO, whether you need a service or a health check, or you're looking to have a dedicated build. Well, that's it for day five. We've learned how to go live and how to test your website for quality assurance. And all that's left now is for Sunset Talks number five, where we look at growth and we're going to look at mobile's five point sales philosophy and how we turn your business into a lead generation machine so i'll see you there at sunset talks number five and i will just say well done so far because this is now the end of the five day challenge